Welcome back, this is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel and I'm going to be answering in this series of videos um, the paper P1, Pure Mathematics, International A-Level at Excel which was supposed to have taken place in June 2020 as the uh, year 2020 was you know, dominated by the whole coronavirus, COVID-19 this paper was actually cancelled and no exams took place anywhere in the world. Um, none of the um, A-level exams took place. So therefore, um, this paper was cancelled, but it was used for the exam that took place in October, November of the same year. So even though it says May 2020 on the paper, it was actually the exam that was used in October 2020. So I've labelled it June stroke October 2020 because there won't be um, a paper labeled October 2020 now, I guess, because they use the May one for October. Anyway, next, let's just get straight ahead to question number one. It tells us to find the values of the constants A and B in this, given that 3PQ squared all to the power of 4 plus 2P times the square root of Q to the power of 8 equals A times P to the power of B times Q to the power of C. So we've got to find the value of A, B, and C in this expression. So first, let's we basically have to simplify this, um, you know, index form problem. So let's take the first part here. Let's take three p. Oops, get my pen right first. Let's take three p to the power of three p q squared to the power of four. So you've got three p q squared to the power of 4. I'll take that part first. Now that part, well, you, well, basically every part of this has to be raised to the power of 4. So you're going to have 3 to the power of 4 and p to the power of 4 and q squared to the power of 4. Okay, so 3 to the power of 4 is going to give you 81 and p to the power of 4, well, it's p to the power of 4 and here we have to multiply the power, so it's q to the power of 2 times 8, which is uh, 2 times 4, which is q to the power of 8, sorry. Okay, now remember, when you uh, raise something to a power, to another power, you multiply the powers together. Okay, so that's q to the power of 8. That's that part. And then you're going to have 2p times the square root of q to the power of 8. Now, when you find the square root of something, the square root of a is equal to a to the power of a half. So you're going to find, you know, um, this is going to be the square root of q to the power of 8. That's q to the power of 8 to the power of a half. So you've got 2p times q to the power of 8 to the power of a half. And again, we multiply the powers. So you're going to end up with 2p times q to the power of 4. And therefore, we have to multiply those together. So we have 81p to the power of 4, q to the power of 8, multiplied by 2 times p times q to the power of 4, which will give us... 81 times 2 is going to be 162. And p to the power of 4 times p, well, you, mul well, you have to add the powers together. So this is like p to the power of 1 here. So you have p to the power of 5. That's from our index law that a to the power of m times a to the power of n equals a to the power of m plus n. As long as the bases are the same, you can multiply two numbers in index form and simplify by adding the powers. So it's p to the power of 4 times p to the power of 1. You add the powers 4 and 1 gives you 5. Similarly for q, you add the powers 8 and 4 gives you 12. And here we have the answer. So they say find the values of a, b and c. So you should really write down a equals 162 and b is the power of p which is 5 and c which is the power of q which is 12. So you should really write this down in your answer. Okay, if you leave it in this form, they may accept it, but according to the instructions of the qu question, they say find the values of the constants A, B, and C, so you should write them down. If it said write this in the form of this, then you could be, it would be okay leaving your answer in this form, and that's fine. But if it says find the values of the constants A, B, and C, you should write down the actual values. Okay, so there's the answer for question number one. So you have to know your laws of indices to answer such a question. Okay, so that's very important. Okay, that's question number one. And 
you'll find other questions that are dealing with indices in the playlist that is going to be appear somewhere over here other questions from the same paper which is your um, June stroke October 2020 will be found in this playlist over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and on the top here will be a link to another past paper to do with P1 um, at Excel International A-Level. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.